Good morning, folks. How are we doing? Today is Valentine's Day. It is February the 14th, 2024. Today we're going to talk about um, a somewhat new development that has... And here comes Gabby. But of course... I have her trained for this. Good morning, Gabby. How are you? Oh, okay. What can I what can I do for you? <laughs> now you know why I call her Gabby. <laughs> She's gonna knock that thing off the wall. <sighs> and she doesn't pee on it first. Oh my god, she just makes me freak out whenever she's back there because I know she's a She's a sprayer. She's a female sprayer. She's bound and determined to spray on something. Why do you have to tell everybody my secrets? God damn it. <laughs> Plus, I am highly allergic to Gabby. <sighs> okay, so my eyes are going to get all puffy and red. <sighs> That's not because of the weed. That's because of Gabby. Okay, I just, she's going to do what she does. I, I don't, she pees on shit, I don't care. As long as it's not my computer. I don't care. Good morning. This is my, this is my life. Um, okay, you just sit there and relax. Hi. Uh, it's a new development. It's kind of new. They've been kind of pushing it since about October of 2023. I'm going to share that with you. This is a guy named Dalen. I believe that's how you pronounce his name, Mohammed Dalen. Um, I, I believe he, he was at one time uh, the neocons, Elliot Abrams and Bush and the Bush administration and Condi Rice's. Uh, he was their go-to guy to get rid of Hamas after they won the election in 2006 uh, through military means. Um, he was their guy. They armed him. They trained his people. Um, and they had him, they tried to overthrow Hamas militarily. People who say that Israel and the United States put Hamas in power because they're an asset of Israel, you have, you have no idea what you're talking about. They paid a lot of money to try to, to influence the election so that Palestinian Authority would win and Fatah would win. And this guy, who was already part of Fatah, would win. And then, when they lost, they paid a lot of money with, and, and provided military equipment to this guy and his fucking thugs, 20,000 of them, to go in and physically remove Hamas, kill them. He is a... <laughs> he is... Clearly, their asset has been clearly has clearly been their asset since an asset since the 1980s, um, and now, according to reports, um, in the discussions Biden had with Netanyahu, they discussed a number of things that they would ways Palestine would look post Hamas, and handing it over to this guy, handing all of Palestine, the West Bank, and this and Gaza over to this guy, their asset, uh, was one of their fucking options that they discussed. The same fucking option that the neocons tried to use in 2007 after Hamas won the fucking election. Uh, <laughs> the more things change, the more they stay the same, boys and girls. The neocons are still in fucking power. They were in power during the fucking Obama days as well, and less to a lesser degree because Trump didn't like them, uh, but they were still there. I mean, he was still sending John Bolton to deal with North Korea until he finally had to fire him because he realized John Bolton was a psychopath. But aside from that, um, that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, their uh, hand-picked dictator uh, to replace... Uh, Hamas and the Palestinian Authority to get rid of both of them to put one guy in charge in what they would consider a two-state solution. They would call a two-state solution. But the guy himself, Dalen himself said, um, the first thing to do was we, we'd have to bring in, there'd have to be a, an interim government with one guy in charge, him. He, he claims he doesn't want to, do what, 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 it wouldn't be him, but he's just saying that. 
Of course it would be him. He's, try, he's wanted to be the dictator of Palestine for a very long time. To bring in a one, uh, 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 an interim government for two years before holding elections, quote unquote, um, with one guy in charge, but also with a, uh, a group of technocrats, as he put it, uh, to dictate how, pa how Palestine is going to be set up, the new constitution, how it's going to be run. It would be a two-state solution, but in name only, run by a dictator backed by both Israel and the United States, imposing IMF uh, structural austerity measures uh, on, the, on the country, taking out IMF loans, uh, bringing in Israeli businesses, bringing in American businesses, all the things, all the trappings that Israel wants to do on their own if they can get Gaza for themselves. But if they can't get Gaza for themselves, if they have to go with a two-state solution, this is their, this is their pretend two-state solution. It would be Palestine in name only. And there, of, of, of that, there is no doubt. The New York Times has written just today, published just today, an article talking about, is this guy the Arab fucking choice for uh, post-Hamas fucking Palestine? Um, obviously not. He's not an Arab choice. Even in their own article, I'll show you all this stuff in a second. It's all on my website. Even in their own article, they have to admit at the end, uh, there's no one uh, officially standing by this guy because this guy is hated. This guy is hated by, see, I told you the eyes. This guy is hated by the vast majority of Palestinians. There are some neoliberal Palestinians who serve the interest of Israel and the United States, living in the West Bank, living in fucking Gaza, uh, who would be glad to have this guy in, who would be glad to have the technocrats come in and remake fucking Gaza in the glorious fascist fucking model that they remade places, uh, the, 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 the Asian Tigers, fucking uh, Chile, uh, Russia, they would be glad because it would mean opportunity for them. They would get fucking rich. By the way, uh, Mohammed Dalin uh, also got rich. He was finally expelled from Gaza. He went to the West Bank. He asked Israel to finance another attack on Gaza, an attack on, uh, give him weapons and give him uh, intelligence agency, agency support and give him fucking money. Um, that fell through as well, as well. Just like when we, in 2007, when the Bush administration and Condi Rice, with their whole plan for a new Middle East, uh, in 2007, when he did actually launch an attack on Hamas and lost badly, got his ass fucking handed to him, and he barely escaped with his life. In the end, uh, he was actually in 2000, he was kicked out of fucking, uh, he was kicked out of, eventually kicked out of the West Bank uh, and kicked out of Fatah uh, by Mahmoud Abbas. Because Mahmoud Abbas, dig this, they are trying to pass this guy off as the behind closed doors Arab nation choice to run fucking Palestine. In spite of the fact that not only did he capture and torture and kill fucking Hamas fucking members back in 2004, in 2003, when he was running this police state in Gaza. Um, but not only does he, is he known to be associated with and, and, a, and a puppet of Israel and fucking the United States. And that's not a question. But also, the vast majority of Palestinians understand, or at least believe, that he's the one who killed Yasser Arafat. Because he was close to Yasser Arafat, he had been positioned there after nearly 10 years. Oh my God. Hello?
somebody's fucking machine sorry um he had been arrested in the 1980s by the Israelis he learned Hebrew while he was in fucking custody several times in the 1980s but then he was held for a while but then he was released just in time to go over and and start associating with uh, Yasser Arafat's people he got introduced to Yasser Arafat, his background, he was born in a fucking refugee camp in Gaza. And he was a member, he was a founding member of a, a young fucking Hamas fighters, young uh, Palestinian resistance fighters back in the day. That's why he was arrested. But he was arrested and he was conditioned and he was given uh, the, 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 the choice, as I put it. You know, we can fucking keep you here and kill you. Or you can end up working for us, which is what he chose to do. Clearly, because um, the rest of his life, he's done exactly that. He's worked for Israel and the United States, and now he's doing the same goddamn thing. Excuse me. Um, let's take a look at some of the stuff I have for you on my website. Uh, plenty of backup for this. Uh, the new article from the New York Times, uh, titled, The Palestinian Exile Champions an Arab Vision for Gaza. An Arab Vision for Gaza. Um the New York Times. I forgot to put a link here to him. Sorry, you can find it easily. Uh, As the Gaza war rages with civilian death soaring, few Arab leaders have publicly voiced their visions for the future of the battled enclave, fearing they will be accused of endorsing Israel's actions. But one influential Palestinian exile in an interview with the New York Times has provided public insight into the types of post-war plans that Arab leaders are privately discussing. Under the plan outlined by Mr. Dalin and echoed privately by Arab nations, a new Palestinian leader would resume responsibility for Gaza and the parts of Israeli-occupied West Bank. No Abbas, no Hamas, said Mr. Dalin. Mr. Dalin still has critics who say uh, that he used heavy-handed taxes, ta- tactics in Gaza and that he had a tendency for self-promotion. Uh, Saudi Arabia and Egypt declined to comment on the plan described by Mr. Dowlin. A UAE statement did not directly address the plan, meaning none of these Arab states that they said is the plan, an Arab vision for, for, for Gaza. It's not an Arab vision, except in the minds of the guy talking to the New York Times, which was, by the way, Mr. Mohammed Dowlin. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I'll let you know. Now, this is from Wikipedia, but I have a ton of other stuff here to share with you. But we'll start with Mr. Uh, we'll start with Wikipedia. Quote, Dalin was the target of a bounty offered by the Turkish government. They accused Dalin of being an agent of Israeli intelligence and a financial backer of the Gulen movement. Dalin's uh, net worth is about $120 million dollars. Some of that he, got, he garnered when he was actually in power in Gaza. He would collect taxes for the Hamas government upon entry into Gaza, and 40% of it was redirected into his own bank accounts. Then, when he was finally exiled not only by Hamas, but also by Fatah and by the Palestinian Authority, and forced to leave, he went and lived in exile in the United Arab Emirates, where he became very close to leadership there and the royalty there, and he used his influence uh, also with the United States and Israel because they were repaying him for his loyalty. He amassed, he amassed a fortune of about $120 million, some of which, by the way, he was, of course funneling over to Gulen, the Gulenist movement, because they are also free marketeer Muslims, Arabs. Quote, everybody knew Dalin was an Israeli agent. Quote, Dalin is, is, allegedly, is alleged to have enriched himself through corruption. His personal wealth is estimated over $120 million. He maintained a private army in Gaza Strip in 2003 and 2004, which was trained and equipped by American services. And then, of course, as I told you, in 2006, when Hamas won, he actually 
used that fucking private army to try to overthrow Hamas and kill Hamas leaders. And of course, he failed and lost. In June of 2011, Dalin was expelled from Fatah because of repeated claims by Palestinian President Mahmoud Mohammed Abbas that he had murdered Yasser Arafat. After a nine-month investigation launched by Al Jazeera, traces of a radioactive poison polonium, I think it's called polonium-256 or something like that, were found on Arafat's belongings, strongly increasing suspicions that he was poisoned. And he was poisoned. Uh, if you don't know, this polonium is used by uh, various international bodies um, as an assassination method. You can only find it if you look for it during an autopsy. Uh, but it, what it does is it creates a, an extremely aggressive cancer, form of several cancers, a um, wrath of cancers throughout the body. Um, and we're talking about an amount of this stuff equivalent to three or four grains of uh, salt. You put that into somebody's food, they eat the food, uh, it's so fucking radioactive. You put it in somebody's fucking food container um, in a refrigerator and you use a, uh, what, what do they call it, Geiger counter in the, in the kitchen. It's The Geiger counter is going off in the kitchen with the, with the refrigerator closed. That's how fucking radioactive this shit is. To put it in perspective, uh, the people in Chernobyl uh, who were tasked with trying to put out the fires and clean shit up, some of them picked up the goddamn graphite that had been blown out of the fucking core and was lying on the fucking ground and, of course, the roof. And they got burns and they got hand, burns on their hands and they were in bad shape. Um, some of them eventually died. But not all of them. Some of them are still alive today. That's the shit that was, that's, that's some of the most radioactive material. The, 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 the graphite that was used back then, I guess they still use it, I don't know, in, uh, from the core of a goddamn nuclear reactor. Uh, some of the most radioactive shit. Not even close to this shit. Not even close to this shit. You put it in somebody's fucking food, they eat it, they ingest it. Within three weeks, they're dead. And it's, it's not... Possible dead is not maybe dip dead. And it's a nasty way to fucking die. It's a nasty way to die. Um, somebody very close to him in his compound that was, by the way, under siege by the fucking Israelis for two years leading up to it. Uh, Dalen had that kind of access. Now, I'm not sitting here saying Muhammad Dalen killed Yasser Arafat. Uh, but that's what uh, Muhammad uh, Abbas says, Mahmoud Abbas says, um, and many other Palestinians. So here's, here's the point. Who the fuck would think, except for New York Times, Times of Israel, French 24, and soon to be many other outlets, who the hell would think that it would be an Arab fucking plan to put that man in charge who was widely suspected of killing one of the most beloved Palestinians uh, of all time, Yasser Arafat. Guy who was, who was a peacemaker, guy who was a fucking warrior, guy who was a resistance fighter, and a, and a, and a born leader. Um, who would think that it would be a, a plausible plan to put that fucker in charge? A plan accepted by the Palestinians to put that guy in charge? <laughs> Only neocons. And fucking Zionist Israelis would think that would that that plan would fly, and of course, that's where we're at. <coughs> Have a listen to this. This is from JVL. This is Mohammed Dalim. Dalim was arrested 11 times by the Israelis between the years of 1981 and 1986. In 1988, he was then deported to Jordan and won Yasser Arafat's confidence. He was sent there by the Israelis. He was put there, and they used their intelligence sources close to fucking Yasser Arafat to introduce them. Dalin returned to Gaza in 1994. Upon his return to Gaza in 94, he enjoyed a wave of popular support. Why shouldn't he? 
understand this about him. He was born in a Palestinian refugee camp. He was an organizer uh, and a fighter for the resistance youth or Hamas youth. Um, that's why he was arrested so many times in 1981 and 1986. Okay? Just pointing that out. In March of 2007, despite objections from Hamas, uh, Mohammed Dalin was appointed by Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas uh, to lead the newly reestablished Palestinian National Security Council. Now, why is that? You'll find out later, but I'll tell you right now. The reason that he was made the leader of this Palestinian National Security Council overseeing the security forces in the Palestinian territories was because Elliot Abrams, under orders from the Bush administration, put pressure on Mahmoud Abbas to appoint him to that position. He was put there by the fucking neocons so he could undermine and attack and kill Hamas and overthrow them through a military, paramilitary fucking action. Dalin organized paramilitary units of several thousand fighters trained with American assistance and lobbied Israel to allow Fatah forces in Gaza to receive large shipments of arms and munitions to fight Hamas. In the April of 2008 edition of Vanity Fair, it was revealed that after the 2006 elections, Dalin had been central in U.S. plot to remove the democratically elected Hamas-led government from power. Americans provided money and arms to Dalin, trained his men, and ordered him to carry out a military coup against Hamas in the Gaza Strip. However, the elected Hamas government forestalled the move and carried out an armed counter-coup. In, our, in October of 2007, the Bush administration reportedly exerted heavy pressure on Abbas to appoint Dalin as his deputy. Some Fatah members said that the U.S. and some EU countries had made it clear they would like to see Dalin succeed Abbas as head of the Palestinian Authority. That's from JVL. This is from France 24. This was October, December of 2023. Could exiled former Palestinian leader Mohammed Dalin lead Gaza after the Israel-Hamas war? Hmm. The idea was being floated back as early as December of 2023. Actually, it came from, it was earlier than that. Gaza's former strongman, uh, Mohammed Dalin, has now spent more than a decade in exile in the UAE. United Arab Emirates. But rather than fade into the spotlight, from the spotlight, he has amassed a new kind of power as a businessman and advisor to President Mohammed bin Zayed al Nahan. Despite his long absence from the Palestinian territories, uh, Dalin is still thought of as a potential leader in Gaza if Hamas were removed from power. Thought of by whom? Not by Palestinians. Mohammed Dalin is from Gaza and one of the heroes of the first Intifada, the Palestinian armed uprising uh, aimed at the ending the Israeli occupation in Gaza and the West Bank in 1987 to 1993, said France 24's correspondent in Israel, Stephanie Amar. He has support from Israel and support from the United States. Well, well of course he does. But the question is whether he will be able to impose his power. There are multiple options on the table if Israel were to succeed in ousting Hamas from the Gaza Strip, which won't happen. Dalin also spent a large part of the 1980s in Israeli prisons after being arrested 11 times for his leading role in the Palestinian political party, Fatah. While in prison in Israel, he learned to speak fluent Hebrew, according to The Economist, which ran an interview with the former leader in October. I tried to get that, but it's behind a paywall, so I couldn't. But during that interview is when he talked about, uh, yeah, he'd like to bring in uh, 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 the technocrats, the neoliberal fucking technocrats to slam the economic brick down the people of Palestine after all of this shit that's already gone on. That's from France 24, December 2023. This is current from the Times of Israel. Exiled Palestinian strongman uh, Dalin touts Gazan future without Hamas or Abbas. An independent Palestinian leader, independent. <laughs> now that's a joke. Backed by Arab peacekeepers, 
which Arab peacekeepers? The ones he says back him, but they won't actually back him? Could oversee the reconstruction of Gaza after the war between Israel and Hamas, a prominent Palestinian exile says. Him. Mohammed Dalem, the former Palestinian Authority Gaza security chief, tells the New York Times in that, that is, in, oh, you can find the New York Times link here. There you go. That in his vision, the leaders of Egypt, Saudi Arabia, and the Emirates are open to supporting the pro to supporting processes that are part of efforts leading to a Palestinian state. According to him, that's his vision. The new Palestinian leader would push Palestinian Authority, uh, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas aside to a ceremonial role and could invite countries like the UAE and Saudi Arabia to send in troops and pay for a reconstruction of the Strip, says Dalin, who many think may be eyeing the job for himself. Dalin's security force operated in Gaza with an iron fist after the Oslo Accords. A Gazan native, he was abroad when Hamas took over by force, that's a lie, in 2007. Thank you, Times of Israel. And after moving to the West Bank, he was expelled from Fatah in 2011 over accusations that he murdered Yasser Arafat. They got that much right. That's current from uh, Times of Israel. The Curse of Muhammad Dalim. This is, this is where you have the connection, the neocon connection between the Biden administration and, of course, the Bush administration. I wrote neocons come in all flavors, red and blue. Here we see neocon influenced uh, Bush administration trying to pick the same dictator for Palestine as the Biden administration just did. This is from JNS, written October 2023. In the frequent calls with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, U.S. President Joe Biden uh, dedicated much of the conversation to the post-war political solutions. Cabinet members have come up with various ideas regarding, which of course they discussed, regarding who will control Gaza after Hamas. And one proposal was to have former Fatah strongman Mohammed Dalin rule Gaza. This is a discussion. This is a, this is a plan this is one of their options that they're talking about. And now that the New York Times has come out and given this a loud voice, <laughs> it seems like maybe that might be the plan. Remember, this would be a two-state solution in name only. Dalin's not going to take over just to have it all turn into fucking Israel. That's not what he's about. He wants to be Al Sisi, he wants to be the guy in char put, put in place in charge of his own country, where he can be dictator. Of course, he's paid off. He's doing like Zelensky. He's doing the bidding for outside forces. At the expense of the people of his own nation, like Zelensky, and like so many fucking puppet dictators have, over the fucking decades. I want to read to you something from Al Jazeera in 2007. This is a section of this article. Handpicked by the neocons to overthrow Hamas, which is the, the title of this, The Curse of Mohammed uh, Dalin. Uh, this is the last thing I have. But that's the title of the Al Jazeera article. And here's, of course, the link to it. You can go read it yourself. Handpicked by the neocons to overthrow Hamas. It was Gaza-based Fatah leader Mohammed Dalin who was selected to lead the mission of overthrowing Hamas. The choice was made by George w. Bush's, George W. Bush's own National Security Council Middle East advisor, neocon extraordinaire, Elliot Abrams. Then the neocons were leading a campaign to construct a new Middle East, what Condi Rice referred to as uh, the birth pangs. It's called the uh, fight between Israel and, and Lebanon, the birth pangs of a new Middle East which was the culmination of the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003, and then, then Secretary of State Condi Rice's aggressive diplomacy in the region. The U.S. government was eager to show that its violent military ventures in the Middle East would eventually lead to a political stability through a U.S.-sponsored, quote, democracy initiative, end quote. The man to thwart Palestinian democracy 
was Muhammad Dawan. It was the obvious choice, since Dawan, a warlord by any standard, had good ties with Israel, a strong position with Fatah, and was deeply connected to various Arab, Arab intelligence agencies. He also commanded 10 security branches in Gaza at one time, dedicated mostly to cracking down on dissent, Hamas. Many of those imprisoned and tortured by Dawan's forces, funded and trained under a program managed by U.S. Lieutenant uh, General De uh, Keaton, uh, Keith Dayton, targeted Hamas fighters, political leaders, and supporters. This plan, of course, was a massive failure. In a matter of a few days, in the summer of 2007, Hamas routed Dalin's forces and, until this day, single-handedly single -handedly controlled Gaza. So he failed back then. But that's what he was. Listen, <laughs> dude was, uh, could have been, um, a good leader for fucking Palestine. He could have. He could have legitimately succeeded uh, Abbas. He could have. But he was taken, he was arrested, he was disappeared like so many other Palestinians, young Palestinians, young Palestinian men specifically, mostly, into the Israeli prison system where he was turned. He learned Hebrew. Uh, and he learned uh, to give in to the influence of Israel and the United States. Um, and that's what he did. And that's how he spent his, the, the rest of his fucking career, the rest of his life. He was an asset. Now, do I know for a fact that he killed Yasser Arafat, that he was the one who delivered the fucking Polonia? Um, no. But he was there, and he had access. And he would have been trusted by Arafat. He was trusted by Arafat. Um, we also know, and, it, and looking at the rest of his history, we also know that um, he was more than willing to kill Palestinians on behalf of, of Israeli and U.S. interests. Um, so say what you will about him. Uh, he also tried to overthrow uh, 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 Mahmoud Abbas. Um, and he tried to fucking succeed him, and um, Abbas got rid of him. Say what you, whatever you will about this individual. He's in exile for a reason. He's also rich for a reason. No Palestinians, except for the very small percentage, the very small percentage that are neoliberal neocon, uh, uh, free marketeer fucking Palestinians ready to bring in the technocrats and, and watch the, the country turn into a, into basically a fucking small fucking Ukrainian state. You know. um, perhaps they would stand with him, but nobody else. And for that matter, even though they are trying to, uh, they, 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 the New York Times words it very carefully, not to suggest that somebody from Saudi Arabia and Egypt and United Arab Emirates uh, told the fucking reporters from the New York Times that they were supporting this idea, coming up with this idea. Yeah, we'll put this guy, he supposedly killed fucking <laughs> Yasser Arafat, a god in Palestine. Uh, yeah, we were thinking about, you know, installing him as a fucking new dictator in fucking Palestine for the two-state solution. Uh, at least the New York Times doesn't try to frame it that way. If you read carefully into what they say in the article, it sounds like he's the one telling them he's been talking to these people and such. And it's, and it's his opinion. It's his fucking word they're taking. But they, they can't, they're very careful and how they phrase it. Um, um, that would never fucking happen. That would never happen. Um, they're never going to be able to fucking do away with Hamas in the first goddamn place. But this just goes to show you, <laughs> this just goes to show you, you know, you think we're, we're so far away from 2007. We're not. You think, you know, the Biden administration, oh my God, the crazy leftists and Biden is, he's a socialist and a commie and he's not. They're the same. 
They have the same fucking advisors. They have the same interests. And those interests are BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, uh, uh, Northrop Grumman. Uh, that, that's, that, that's their interests. That's who they serve. Neocons have always served. And so have the neolibs. Um, the fact that this thing, which I showed you from one of the articles from October of 2023, the fact that this thing is now being brought front and center by the New York Times tells me that this is going to be kind of a push. Hey, we can get this guy. And he's, he was born in a fucking refugee camp in Gaza. Who better to serve? Uh, and they'll try to push this guy on folks. And I'll tell you right now, keep an eye out. You're going to see some alt fucking media figures trying to push this guy as a legitimate solution, as a legitimate means by which, as a bridge by which to get to that two-state solution. A two-state solution, Palestinian state run by this guy is not Palestine. That's like a rhino, Republican by uh, name only, <laughs> in name only. That's, that's not Palestine. That's Israel, United States. That's fucking uh, the Gulenists. Uh, that's that's not Palestine. This guy would never, Palestinians would never fucking accept it. They would never accept it. Even if they, they, they don't fully buy into the thing that he killed. It had to be somebody close that he trusted. Somebody in the fucking compound during the, the two-year standoff or the thing. Um, it would have to be somebody close. So, who knows? Uh, he fits that bill. But even if they didn't buy that, they know what he was. They know what he, what the, the kind of fucking rule that he tried to impose, or he did impose in Gaza for several years before they got rid of him, before he, he, he showed his true colors. Okay? They know what he is. He's a puppet. He's an asset, much like Zelensky. Um, and as much as the Palestinians have been through already, uh, they are not going to, if they have a shot at a two-state solution, at a real two-state solution and, a, and, and recognition from Israel and everybody else in the United States, uh, Palestine is a fucking state. Notice he said that he would be in charge of the Gaza territories and the territories controlled by Palestinians in the West Bank, meaning he wouldn't move the fucking settlers out of the West Bank. He wouldn't move the settlers' businesses out of the West Bank. He'd leave the Bantistans in place where Israeli businesses can get the dirt cheap fucking labor. He'd leave all that in place. He told you, he tells you right fucking there. And when he talks about bringing technocrats in to remake fucking Palestine, he's telling you exactly who he's in service to. And so, by the way, is the New York Times. Anyway, if you hear about this guy, if you see anything in the next couple of weeks about this guy, next couple of days, certainly, but the next couple of weeks, uh, be wary. Uh, I would go so far as to say this guy is not Palestinian. I thank you for your time.